You know, uh, in performance-based design, when you design a structure, the owner can come to you and say how they would like the structure to behave during the earthquake. So if you only did it for life safety, which means that nobody would get killed, but the structure could be destroyed, obviously that's the cheapest way to go. All right, but there's other levels. There's the operational level, which basically means that there'll be zero damage. So that's, of course, the most expensive. You're going to build it, but in the post-earthquake period, there's no damage, and you're instantaneously operational. The other level is immediate occupancy, which there is some damage, but you will pretty soon be up and running. Third one is life safety, in which there will be a lot of damage. Probably you can't use the building, or it's going to require a lot to replace it. And the last one, of course, is collapse prevention, where the structure doesn't collapse, but after the earthquake, you've got to tear it down. So these are the various levels of performance that can be specified. Now, what the code has done is that based upon these levels of performance, they basically come along and told you that that's the amount of strain that you are allowed. So that if you have a particular beam, you, it tells you how much rotation of the end of the beam is allowed for immediate occupancy, for life safety, for collapse prevention. Because you're not talking about stresses anymore. So can I, can I next slide please? All right. So these are the various levels of performance, and they define what they mean. Operational means backup utility services maintain. It's essentially, it's, the, the bottom line is that as you go up the level, your performance is higher, it costs more to build, and the loss is less in an earthquake. As you come lower, it's cheaper to build, but you don't perform as well, and these various levels are really unimportant as to what they mean. I mean, they mean exactly what I've said. Now, there's some details, what kind of damage is allowed, uh, you know, how much it's going to cost. Those are the wide variety of things uh, that are detailed in this ASCE 41, which is the guide or the specification associated with all of this performance-based design. Um, but essentially, the point is that you are defining, you are designing to a particular level of performance. And in the, in the level of performance, essentially what it means that you establish how much deformation is allowed, all right? And you have to stay within that deformation in order for it to satisfy the code. Can I next slide, please? Now, those force deformation relationships that we talked about in the beginning, where I had a force deformation relation of just a, a, a bar. You know, we had drawn the force deformation relationship, stress strain curve of a bar. Then I had a force deformation relationship of a beam. Uh, what, what the ASC code has done is that for a wide variety of different components, whether they were beams, columns, reinforced concrete beams, reinforced concrete columns, shear walls, connections, a wide variety of uh, um, uh, different systems like that, what the code has done is defined force deformation relationships. And essentially, they are of this form, where you have a linear segment, you have a nonlinear segment, and after a while, you have a strength loss segment, and then you have a residual strength. So they have idealized the, uh, the force deformation behavior in just these, essentially, these four lines. So all members have been idealized so that you don't necessarily have to go to do a lab test in order to get a force deformation relationship. You can actually just pick up the code 
and it will, they've already done those tests for you and they've documented. Now in very special situations, if you have some kind of new material or some kind of a special configuration, the code may, allow, may require that you do uh, a test and, uh, and, and do a shaking table test uh, to, uh, to develop a force deformation relationship. But, but for now, uh, most of the stuff that you might want to do, you can get it from, uh, from the ASCE 41 curve, uh, 41 specification. And a lot of this stuff is already built into computer programs. Like if you, for instance, use D-tabs, uh, you don't have to do anything. You basically say you want an ASC 41 beam, and based on the reinforcing that you provided, based on the size, it will automatically go in there and create the force deformation relationship, and you can calc create the hysteresis loop that you might want to assign for that. We will talk more about that uh, a little later. 